here's why I think the the Silicon Valley Bank thing is in, in it, it is in it is explicitly intertwined with everything Carp has been saying. Carp for the past uh, really couple years, he's been saying why they left Silicon Valley because you've got all these startups that aren't doing anything for the world. You've got like you've got like you've got companies that are valued at thirteen point three billion dollars that raised three hundred million dollars in a Series C fundraising in April of twenty twenty one that legitimately make money off people trading a picture of a monkey with other people. Talking about OpenSea, right? These were the companies in 2021 that were getting funded. And I think now it's starting to make a lot more sense. Well, why were they getting funded? Because the monoculture in Silicon Valley said, instead of focusing on innovation, let's focus on, for lack of a better word, bullshit. And let's fund these $300 million let's put into that company. Well, what does OpenSea do? They take their 300 million and they drop it into Silicon Valley Bank, which is the partner of all these startups that aren't doing it. And I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating when I say none of these startups, you know, do anything important, but you get the point. And then Silicon Valley Bank, because there's so much greed and, and fluff in the system, they're like, well, we're just, we, you know, we're going to put this money in all these uh, mortgage-backed securities and we're not going to have any risk management. And the fact that Palantir left Silicon Valley and they didn't have any money in that bank kind of proves the thesis that they left a place that they felt was becoming a monoculture that wasn't actually innovating. They went somewhere else. They took all their money with them, the 2.5 billion they had, and they didn't have to get caught up in any of this mess because of that exact reason for why they left. Too much greed, too much fluff in the system, not actual innovation, and they've got 1.5 billion in treasuries printing $100 million a year now. So so I'm going to disagree. I'm going to disagree with you for one reason. I Silicon Valley definitely has pockets of you know, this, what you're talking about is culture of just monetizing users and that's it. But that that's not the only thing a lot of companies in the Silicon Valley do. There's a lot like 3D printing companies that are out there that have discovered a tremendous amounts of value in doing things. You've got literally companies that are putting rockets and people into space right now. You know, all of that is born out of the technology from Silicon Valley. You also have chip designs that are just outpacing anything that you could have thought of. A EUV lithography machine designing. Like there are so many things that Silicon Valley does outside of it. Yeah, we may see the the consumer ones because those are the most prominent. But Silicon Valley still no, has I, a so, lot so, of it of any companies. So. I agree with you. But the problem is Andreessen Horowitz, one of the biggest venture capital funds, raised $4.3 billion dollars to invest in crypto, which all those companies have turned yeah, out. Yeah, in the grand... Oh, no, but, but all, in, every single company has turned out to be a Ponzi scheme. Axie, yeah, but in the Infinity, grand scheme... They're investing... In the grand, oh, my, my point it, is, the three hundred, for example, the 300 million that went into OpenSea, that could have gone into all the innovative stuff you're talking about, the stuff that matters, but it went into trading JPEGs. At some level, as an as a American society that is that is uh, responsible for building tech companies because no other parts of the world do it like we do it, we've got to look at ourselves and be like, this is ridiculous. Like, how did we let this happen? But this isn't a unique problem though, right? I yeah. think it's oh, this is an irrational. incredibly unique problem. I don't think so. I, it's happened before. People were trading tulips and they busted, right? I mean, it, mm -hmm. it's when you have a rational exuberance that you truly start to see where the real value lies. And I agree a lot with what Chris is saying is, you know, while the uh, there's a lot of what you're talking about, Amit, which I agree with both of you, right? So both of you are right, right? I don't want to say, you know, I'm choosing sides here. Not that it's important, but I see a lot of people that are chasing the bag, trying to be the greatest unicorn. And then I see a lot of people like Elon saying, hey, we need to be an interplanetary species. That's a great purpose. Then you see people like, but I think the thing that we have yet to see, other than say the few companies like SpaceX and and maybe a few others that have kind of come out as greatness over the past ten years, um, is people are less about chasing the purpose of changing the world and its trajectory, like the Apples and the Microsofts, and the more so about chasing the bag. But I do see some people that are truly starting to try to shape the future. And I think we're in this. But, but, that, but that's my point, Matt, not to cut you off, but that's my point. There yeah. was way more money going into stuff that objectively we can say doesn't matter, like like crypto exchanges and, 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 and JPEGs and all this stuff. I mean, 2021, people were getting money. People were getting $30 million valuations for just an idea about an NFT. I mean, I, I yeah, knew this but... was trying to raise money at that time. So like my point is, that much exuberance, yes, the tulips have happened over again, but now they're happening with trillions of dollars. But, of the, but the same thing, I mean, I agree, but I disagree that it's a recent thing. I mean, the same thing happened with all the solar companies in 2008 with mm -hmm. Obama, right? Yeah. And then, you know, there's always going to be, when always the, whenever there's some sort of recession, people aren't really going to turn around and, and think about it until retrospect really kicks in.
And yeah, so, also, also look at the tech bubble. The tech bubble, I remember when people, you could have had any website and people would have thrown money at you. But guess what? Among all those websites were the Amazons of the world, the Googles of the world, the ones that really made the big changes. So even among the crypto and NFT and all that other stuff, there are definitely use cases out there that we may not necessarily know about that are not prominent right now. We see the trading of the monkeys and back in the day, the, 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 uh, what do you call it? Like just the developing of a website and people saying, oh, you're going to run your business off of a website. In 2002, 2003, people thought that was the stupidest idea and they can't believe they ever invested in that. Then you go 10 years forward, everyone's like, oh my God, I can't believe I missed all the gains that I could have had in tech where all these, you know, all this, all this, um, all this money could have been made while actually doing that. So it's, it's one of those fallacies that comes to mind where you have a good idea, it gets taken way too far and overblown, and then you have all these other little people show up and try to copy you and try to do the same thing, and they get a bag, and then they liquidate, they get out, and basically now the industry is left with pieces, but among those pieces is usually a lot of great companies that are going to be able to withstand all of this stuff and end up profiting on the other end. I mean... Just remember, even even among people that that think NFTs are dead and all this other stuff, you know, you could, there are people that pay millions of dollars for a small piece of paper with their favorite like um, sports star on it. You know, like um, the the trading cards. There's value in that, right? So, what if you could digitize that? I'm not saying that that's like an infinite, like definitely going to be a big thing in the future, right? But there's a market for it that people don't necessarily realize. All I'm saying is don't, whenever an industry falls apart, it's always a good idea, good idea to look into that industry, whatever players are left and see if they have the wherewithal to actually in innovate and develop a business but around see, it. See, I agree with you that there's going to be companies that there's probably some NFT companies that'll pan out. There's use cases for it. Yeah. But I think you guys have to agree with me that Palantir left because they saw this nonsense happening. Like we can all admit in 2020, 2021, there was companies that were getting funded that should objectively that money should have. That's not, not why they left. Dude, they they got chased out of town. I'll be I'll be upfront and just tell you guys they got chased out of town from Silicon Valley. They could not deal with the constant protesting and constant heckling that they were getting because of their um, affiliation with Peter Thiel. And, and yeah, um, but no one's heckling the NFT companies. That, that's my point. Like if NFT companies aren't getting no heckled, but, but no 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 is, that's because the nft comp the nft companies didn't violate the vote woke values that that area tends well that's to my sponge that's what we think agree. that's why they left. palantir didn't like fall in line with the googles and the facebooks of the world mm -hmm. to and say, that's my yes, point google gonna... and facebook are monetizing attention they are doing pretty much nothing that's truly valuable at the end of the day Right. Yeah, we're like we could, yeah, we, we're we're co we're communicating on a product. I get it, and I, like YouTube is valuable, but like in in terms of life or death, yeah. right? This is like philosophically valuable. We get to express ourselves, but Google's almost getting replaced with ChatGPT. Like you know what I'm saying? Like the, what is the real? If Facebook goes away tomorrow, what we 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 go to a different app? You know what I mean? Like it's just if Palantir can't help the NHS tomorrow, like shit's not people die, right? If in if, if we take it to its logical extreme, I, I think you're I think you're you're. I'm not even one, trying to fanboy. I'm just trying to make the argument. No, no, that, I'm like, not saying. No, I'm not saying a fanboy. I'm just saying you're undercutting the amount of the the level of connectivity that's been developed and the ability to even have conversations and actually interact with people that you don't necessarily give a lot of credence. So like like Twitter had had it not been for Twitter and YouTube and all these other things, these are consumer companies that monetize attention, right? You just the words that you said. But because of those things, you're able to make a living. We're able to communicate on Twitter. I get We're it. Able I'm to, bullish uh, on that. But then you yeah. have to have Elon had to buy it because Twitter got run by Twitter was censoring people. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is the type of stuff I think Palantir wanted to leave. It's not that I hate. But Twitter look, but Twitter. also, I mean, you want to I think one of the reasons why I think this is a prime example as to why Palantir left Silicon Valley. Look how much hate Elon got when yeah. he bought Twitter. Yeah. Right. Because he wasn't necessarily going to fall in line with the woke isms, like Chris was saying, and the 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 Googles and the Facebooks that are just saying whatever we can do to uphold, you know, and, and silence and free speech is, uh, you know, to an extent and be part of the shadow government. Right. I, to be honest, I'm an, I don't like that. Right. That's yeah, part the of the Twitter reasons files why I, were horrible. It was absolutely yeah. horrible. What we saw yeah. was going on. Yeah. So I think yeah, I think that I, that's yeah. part of the reason why Palantir left. Yeah. So and that's and the thing that the thing that Carp can't say out loud is because we didn't want to fall in line with the Wokies. So he has to make it 
a little bit more presentable, right? In yeah. a way that's not insulting them for their stupidity. That's what he did. He said, oh, you know, well, our values didn't align with the ones in Silicon Valley. And because we wanted to innovate in a different way, X, Y, and Z, all this stuff that he said, that's what he said. But if you if you could take the filter off of Carp and just ask him, give him a blunt midwet cannabis, hey, Carp, why'd you guys leave Silicon Valley? Man, he's fucking wokes, man. He's trying to get a contract. And every time <laughs> I get a contract, they're like, you hate Mexicans. So I, I fuck Palantir. Like, <laughs> You know, this is this is exactly what's happening with the NHS, man. So so they made a unilateral decision. Look, we're not trying to have every day protesters show up at our doors um, trying to get us. And, and also it's a hassle to the employees too. like imagine being an employee. You walk in the door and people are surrounding it with like fucking protesters saying, you know, like, oh, my God, you're helping kill blah, blah, blah. You're helping do this. You're doing that. So, no, you, you got to get away from that nonsense. A, so lot what of they did, a lot of Palantir's problems are very political. The NHS problem is political. The Silicon Valley aspect of it is very political. I think it's going to be continue to be political because it's a very polarizing organization. You're helping nations. Some people want to help certain nations. Some people are just saying, maybe we should just be America and only focus on America, right? You're always going to have that polarization. And when you start tapping into some of these things where normal business as usual gets impacted you're impacting the 200 to 250 bi uh, million people sorry 200 to 250 people that are billionaires in this world that are actually the ones that are in control that are used to the way that things are and a company is actually putting that at risk and challenging that and that's why i think you're really starting to see people put their elbows out when it comes to a company like palantir